the type of society that we live in today create this kind of element that is the environment it's the system which create this criminals yeah. now when you started off as a revolutionary yeah or as a person who wanted to change this system or bring about a change in this society yeah hmm. the situation was different the time was different now we are in a new era of hmm. globalization liberalization yeah. privatization how do you look at the social movements how do you retrospectively hmm. look at the ideology that you pursued at that time well shall i let's put it like that which i have started uh, in the uh, first part of my uh, even the articles then when i wrote it in 2012 was that uh, when i came to marxism or that type of ideology half the world was nearly communist there were big movements all over there was a lot of idealism and there was a hope that uh, a new society could be born which was more just than the existing system and uh, i mentioned that also that's the actually the whole inspiration to write those articles and then this book came from that concept that just in my lifetime in just in the lifetime of one individual yeah it just in one individual right in these 40 50 years i've been an activist all these years and uh, the entire world was going towards communism socialism that thing and today nothing exists zero or practically zero if you take india also uh, whether it's the parliamentary left or the non parliamentary left they are also in a very pathetic uh, state so whether it's worldwide socialism has collapsed in soviet union and uh, then china also the biggest billionaires in china no doubt they have raised the standard of living enormously in china of the entire populace mm. but it doesn't seem to have that type of i have to study it more but it doesn't seem to have that socialist content to it or at least communist and now whether because basically what does one aim that's what I, then i started retrospecting why why when actually the if you see at the time of lo- lockdown or uh, even now the gap between the richest and the poorest is increasing phenomenally probably never been so large and uh, what we find is that uh, in spite of this enormous oppression repression all that stuff that is going on where the alternative what is the alternative okay communism has failed but has cap- capitalism delivered so this question was troubling me when i started writing those articles and then this book somewhere because and then i came to the conclusion well capitalism doesn't have the answer whether it's the keynesian model or the neoliberal model these are just the two mill it's devastated not only the people it's devastated nature thoroughly devastated the environment and devastated the people so there is no answer there then what is the there's no third cause so basically i came to know socialism or a form of socialism can be the only alternative mm-hmm. and but then why have we failed then i uh, came because in the present new liberal model that exists the same idealism is not there there's no basis for it also because there's no socialist society around what can you get uh, cuba is there or some social democrats are there in latin america but those are not the type of things that we saw in our days with china or soviet union the new form of society so what what basically made me think is that we we can't put it uh, put the blame on external factors we have to look inwards and i came to the conclusion rightly or wrongly it's up to it's there in my third section basically the philosophical mm. aspect is there in my original articles also so it's the same basically that we have neglected the concepts of what i call value the new values what i put as the anuradha model because she was really that is basically simplicity naturalness no pretenses straightforwardness all these type of thing which she was came to her naturally actually mm. so that one is the values second is it has to go with freedom and happiness uh, these have to be inculcated into our internal uh, movement into our organization and things like that unless we ha- because if we don't have that goal of happiness we can be autocratic we can be dominating we can be manipulator because we are just wanting power and we are not bothered about that but if we have the goal is happiness we would not want to hurt someone so that is the first people say how are you talking about happiness in this uh, everything is sad because uh, uh, people are suffering so much and all that i'm not talking about that yeah we feel for the suffering so we want an alternative 
but i'm saying within us if we have the goal of happiness then we ourselves will be happy and we will see because what uh, if other people are happy that then we will be happy that thing if we are stiff and this thing and uh, all that type of stuff then we will also be uh, 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 basically really not enjoying our work it'll be as a sort of duty mm-hmm. and uh, this thing and the question of freedom i start from the question of freedom there's freedom and fractured freedom is the name of the book it's fractured at every level political social cultural but i start from the individual where we are alienated what marx called crippled monstrosities we are alienated our subconscious which is actually marx was not freud came after marx uh, our subconscious mind is uh, is programmed basically in the first 8 to 10 years of our life mm-hmm. all our emotions values thinking all that stuff is there then we come to marxism and we seek a change but those things are there programmed in our subconscious mind and they keep reflecting and therefore our conscious mind and the subconscious mind the gap between that leads to enormous amount of alienation mm-hmm. and that's why we become crippled our creativity is crippled mm-hmm. and in india particularly in india i want to emphasize and i've tried to bring it but i'll bring it more in this brahmanical outlook just cripples a person totally it makes it, especially upper caste of course much more but it b- entire society is inflected with this brahmanical outlook and we have such a long non brahmic tradition right from the lokayas buddhist bhakti movement right up to the present phule ambedkar peria i mean but we don't uh, marxism is not taking that forward we either copy soviet union or we copy china